everybody. Today we are taking a low and slow approach to octaves. So there are a lot of great ways you can use octaves in music. Um, they're crucial for bass players and we usually think about them in the funk context where we're playing a groove and we're playing a disco tune or a funk tune or even a rock tune, but maybe we have continuous octaves or we play them real short and staccato. Um, that's a great way to play octaves and something that is absolutely useful and super fun for bass players, but they can also fit into other musical worlds, particularly if we're playing ballads or any songs that just require us to be very foundational and, and not necessarily be very flashy or groove oriented, more so part oriented, where the bass is going to play this foundational part of the music. So let's talk a little bit about how we can use octaves in this low and slow setting. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, find my octave, which is the root note. I'm going to play a G right here on my third fret of my E string, and I'm going to find the octave of that. A great way you can find the octave is by going two frets up and two strings over. And here we go. We have our octave here on the fifth fret of our D string. You can hear that it's the same note, just higher. Huh. You could also play your open G, but um, I prefer to have the control of playing it fretted in this situation. You could also go up the scale to find your G. You can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Major scale is complete when I reach this G. Again, you might say, oh, there are eight notes. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that is magically an octave. So now that we've found our octave, we're going to move it across a chord progression just to give ourselves some structure and to pretend that we're playing a song. And I'm going to go G. Then I'm going to go to the four chord, which is one, two, three, four, C. I'm going to play the octave of that. And then I'm going to go up to the five chord, which is D. I'm going to play my root and my octave. And I'm going to go back to G. Now, the best thing that you can do is get familiar moving through this chord progression using these octaves. Now, when it comes to the musical approach, I like to think about the setting I'm playing in. So if I'm playing, again, like a ballad or something where the bass is supposed to be very, just kind of foundational, provide this nice low supportive bottom end, I'm just gonna play notes legato. And so instead of just playing root notes, the whole time, which I could do, I might mix it up a little bit with an octave. And that sounds really nice. It's not cumbersome, and it just kind of gives you a little bit more wiggle room in terms of what you can do on your instrument while still maintaining your role. So I'm going to pull up a drum track. This is from my friend Derek Phillips's beatbox kit. Super groovy, super fun, and um, this is just a good groove to play along to because it's a slower tempo and it will let you just kind of get into the vibe of how to play with this approach using octaves. Um, I'm also going to really think about how I can connect with a drummer in this situation, which is why I like having a drum track. So when I listen to the drums, I want to say, well, the best thing that I can do to be supportive in this kind of music is by matching the kick drum. So I'm going to listen for the kick drum pattern and choose to play my octave alongside the kick drum. It's also just a great place to know when and how you should make certain moves. So if you hear the kick drum going boom, boom, you might choose to go boom, boom, and create that motion to uh, fit in with what they're doing just to solidify the foundation for the band. So I'm going to play the drum track play along, show you how to move through a 1-4-5 chord progression using octaves and very slow legato notes. And uh, there we have it. You'll learn how to play some octaves. So as I was 
playing through these octaves, you'll notice that I was trying to play with a very graceful and delicate touch. I was using a little bit of a slide motion to go between chords sometimes, and I was just kind of letting each note really ring out. That's a great way to just provide this low end for the rest of the band. And um, just listen to how great your bass sounds. I like to alternate between my root and my octave. Sometimes I'll play the root again. Sometimes I won't. It'll just kind of be whatever I feel and, and how the music dictates who's taking up space. But just know that whenever you're playing a ballad or something slower, something more, um, you know, graceful and perhaps melodic, you might want to try integrating these octaves to take this just very nice approach. So I hope you found this lesson useful. Again, sometimes it's just really nice to play low and slow. Please check out my Patreon page or my True Fire channel. You'll get tab and notation for things and extra goodies. And uh, happy practicing. Keep it groovy.